interviewing Sir Ken last year, um, I asked what his number one priority would be uh, from the report, and he said it's the uh, time to consider whether 46 fire and rescue authorities is too many in England. That's the, the instant res response. He also jumped on co-terminosity um, and said that that should be considered by exception. But uh, he obviously was the chief fire and rescue advisor. Um, he's given the Queen's Fire Service Medal in 91, CBE in 2001. Um, he's one of Her Majesty's Deputy Lieutenants of Greater London, and he was knighted, obviously, in the Queen's Birthday Honours in 2006. Mm. Um, so, Sir Ken. When you asked me a year ago, you know, what was my biggest aspiration and what we should be here, I, I think it would have been, with hindsight, that I wouldn't still be talking about my review nearly a year on, uh, Andrew. Uh, because I think, uh, and I'd like to come back to that, because actually it wasn't quite a year ago it was published, but it certainly was over a year ago that I was tasked with uh, undertaking this review. I say tasked, it was more and more like we asked, some of you have heard me say before, it was a strange debate as I came to the end of my uh, elongated period as the Chief Fire Supervisor, and I also uh, the, looked at this, the potential, potential cost reduction if Fire Rescue has moved staff to uh, manage a rate, the, the manager ratio of the leaders of the authority type, because there was a huge differential between the numbers of officers and the number of, of firefighters, even of authorities of, of different types. And so from this moving from uh, you know, area managers of 53%, 31%, 16%, and how you could move these, uh, and yet if you looked at the best model, the most appropriate model, not necessarily the leanest model, uh, how there are potential savings. And again, I think it's, it's not up to me. I don't think it's even up to government. Perhaps I'll come back to Andrew's point, Andrew, at the end uh, as to, as to who, who leads this forward. Um, but I do think the sector itself has to decide what does good look like, what is the appropriate level that we can get to. So, just to cut to the chase, you've seen, you've seen these in my review, I hope, but the headlines I, I, I left out there hanging uh, about the number of incidents, the number of accidental fires, uh, the average uh, each firefighter attends now is, well, then, it's less now of course, uh, is 110 incidents a year, uh, and that's down from 178 a decade ago and 46 of those are false alarms. So it's a really quite uh, damning expose of, of what we believe the profession is about. The cost of the, the paid of fires and what is in others, uh, and it doesn't seem to relate to anything, uh, it is inexplicable. Uh, and I then uh, said in my review that if all authorities spending more than the average reducer expenditure, only the average, not the leanest, only the average, savings would amount to about 200 million pounds a year. And moving from 30% on call to 40%, I've said, we'll be saving about 123 million. And in one metropolitan authority, there are 73 firefighters and senior manager. In another, there's 29. In a com one, one combined authority, there are 63. And in a very nearby, uh, nearby there are 22. So there's no rationale as to those ratios. Um, and it's up to the sector to say why, not, not for me. I talked about the 17 million we saved if adopted the leading structure of the governance types. I talked about the, uh, the benefits, but also the, some of the disbenefits. Um, I felt the, the NJC Grey Book, 10 years on from Bain and 10 years on for its major revision, was time for a re-look at uh, as to how we go forward in the future. And I recognise that austerity, and actually, very interestingly, the pressure of austerity has actually driven some huge innovation, and still going on, despite the government not, uh, not responding to my review. But actually, there's been huge innovation and change going on, and some collaboration and convergence, which I'm really pleased to see. And the, the austerity is here for a very long time, for most of our lives. And therefore, the transformation that's required of the fire service is important. So I think, Andrew, it's a really quick sum of my report. Um, my, my hope is, um, if you'd ask me now, my hope is that government does respond. I do still think that this, this needs to be sector-led, by the way. I, I still don't think the top-down approach is, 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 um, is appropriate. Uh, I do have concerns, and, and um, I was relieved to see that the national coordination of arrangements, as I, as I understand it, Paul, because I was in email contact with Paul, even though I was out of the country, were working well during the floods. I did have uh, concerns, and I faced it in my review, that while we've moved to localism, as the Secretary of State would say, localism, 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 not necessarily in that order, that we don't lose touch <coughs> with the importance of having an interoperable national resilient fire and rescue service that's got common standards, common interoperability, and common safety. And, and I know Andy is much better at talking about the CFPAC than I am. I'm not going to, Andy. Uh, but I do think there's something in that message about having ensuring we've got common safety and interoperability procedures, 
not just about locally determined procedures and safety, because as fast services not only will inevitably get smaller and national resilience becomes more important, then uh, joint uh, standards, joint training, joint do doctrine become even more important than they did before. I really would like your view um, as that external view, that person that can take a, 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 an objective view of what you think about what's going on now in terms of potential disputes between government departments about who controls things, professional disputes between uh, the, the emergency service about who controls things, uh, between politicians locally about the governance arrangements and which governance arrangements should be in. I think you're in a unique position to add some uh, value to try and clarify that position. Mm. Thanks, Martin. Um, I'll try and be brief because there, there are many other speakers in a, a full day session, uh, but I think those are none of the issues. Um, I think, in a way, uh, so go governance is getting in the way, actually, of some of these discussions. Uh, there is, is a very complex governance in, in fire and rescue services for, you know, for, for many years. A number of fire authorities, as you know, uh, the majority of them are fire authorities, of course, but there are a number of um, county council fire authorities, as that would be the traditional way. There are now an increased number since the last changes of unitary fire authorities. Uh, uh, there are, uh, of course, Metropolitan and, and London all have quite separate and different governance models. And, uh, uh, and the complexity of that is they're getting away, in a way, I think, of some of the more fundamental convergence and, and, and joining issues, which I think is inevitable across the blue light services, uh, Martin. Um, I think it's symptomatic, isn't it? Uh, and I, I can fully say this, as you rightly you right say, that you know, we're waiting for a government response. Because I, think, I, I hope government do res respond. I, I genuinely do, not, not because I did this report. Uh, I, I hope it doesn't completely just uh, sort of wash its way down, down the gutter but rather that the government does have a view. They commissioned me to do it. Uh, I, I gave a view. Uh, I wasn't towing a government line. Uh, and I, and I'm, I, I'd be fine if they said, look, actually, we disagree with most of what you said. I mean, some, some of they will disagree with. I'm absolutely confident of that. But I think, um, I think it's sort of symptomatic, isn't it, that uh, you know, we want actually Blue Light Services to join up. But it appears to me as though the government departments can't, can't join up. And so it's actually got to be joined up at all levels in order for this whole thing to emerge and, and work. Um, do I think the government should be directive? No, I don't. But I, I do actually hope that, collectively, the government can give a, a view, a, a vision, that how they think this should, it should emerge, even if it's status quo. Uh, but to say nothing, I think, would be uh, as unacceptable to me as I, I'm sure we'll hear from other speakers, unacceptable to them uh, in the near future. Now, I'm still, am I really confident? I'm, I'm pretty confident that the government are still to respond. They will still respond to the future. But meantime, there's a huge amount of it, it, additional work and changes going on. So you've got quite a uh, significant move by the police and crime commissioners in some more areas than others, saying actually, in a different world, why wouldn't we just be police and fire? Uh, commissioners and do, do the, the whole thing. We'll be the elected representative for your area and there's some very proactive area going on and there's some very good, very good arguments for that. That doesn't do anything for the numbers of fire authorities. It might be a short-term solution. number of fire authorities or police authorities in the future. <coughs> and it doesn't do anything about that, that, that difficult question about the, the journey about whether the uh, emergency ambulance service should be more part of fire. Now, since, I've, since I was first interviewed by Andrew, I've done much more work on that. And I am actually, I can see the complications, much more complications than about the ambulance service and fire, interestingly, than interestingly, there's police versus fire. There are a significant barriers to doing so. I mean, if I tell you that only, uh, it's, it's just over 2%, only 2% of the calls that the emergency ambulance service go to, the fire rescue service go to. Only 2%. A very, very small proportion where fire and ambulance are on the same emergency incident. Um, and they are very much, and I'm not here as a, as a proxy for the ambulance service, very much a gateway into the NHS, along with many other gateways, because there are all sorts of gateways in the NHS. So these things are an absolutely integrated part of that.